Welcome to Art Talk with April. I'm April Harris of Inked April and the host of this podcast. This is season four. We have some amazing artists on. I can't wait to share them with you. So let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome to Art Talk with April. Today we have Tara Stallworth Lee. She's a multimedia artist and arts educator here in Birmingham, Alabama. And we were just talking about all the different mediums that you do. So we were kind of like, multimedia, I don't know. Right. <laughs> but photography and paper and books and collages. I mean, you're doing all these different things. How did you get started in art? Like, was this something that's from childhood or, you know, why, why, why are you doing what you're doing? <laughs> <laughs> um, my stock answer is that I've always felt like I was an artist, even though, you know, it's not in that conscious way. But looking back, I, um, I do like to be in that mindset of being a child. I like creating artwork with kids, being in the creative space with kids. And a lot of it, I think, is is the simplest way to say it is I like my hands and materials so I liked digging in the dirt or that seems to be my example of late I think about that a lot and I still do that and it's pleasurable um and then later my mom my dad and I got my mom a 35 millimeter camera this would have been in the 70s it was a Minolta I really loved photo doing photo with her and she let me use her camera so I refer to Photography is my first love as a creative medium that I was aware of. It's a love-hate relationship that I have with photo, but that's where it all really started. And magazines, I don't know about you, but I liked, like I got 17 and I liked yeah. Harper's Bazaar and all that stuff. And now I think about all the visuals in that, that I really, really enjoyed a lot and the idea of romanticizing a creative life in the big city was something that I thought I wanted. Um, so I think it was always there in all these different, you know, all these different ways. I totally get what you're saying. There's like these little things in our childhood or teenage years or whatever that just for whatever reason, they kind of stick with us mm -hmm. and they might not have seemed like a big deal at the time. You know, like you have a, like I had a huge stack of 17 teen magazines. Yes. I would look at them over and over again, just yeah. reading the articles and looking at pictures. And I didn't even think about that until just now when you mentioned oh, right. <laughs> it. Like, it was a, that is interesting. Like, mm -hmm. It probably, you know, sort of formed my ideas of, you know, like teenager, being a teenager, being a girl in the United States or something, you know. Yes. Yeah, context is important because I grew up in small towns and this mm -hmm. was like another planet. You know, usually you were seeing images from New York or L.A. Yeah. or some big city and romanticizing these lifestyles and but a lot of it for me was the fashion that was super creative and I really enjoyed looking at clothes and, and that's only recently because of, you know, some other projects and thinking about different things. And well, that was a huge part of what I enjoyed, you know, um, I love how art ties to music and, you know, there's just all of that definitely influences, I think. Seeing, I don't think people really understand that about a lot of artists like when you see the final works or in their later life and they're mm -hmm. creating these things you don't necessarily realize all of the elements that they're yeah. drawing from for like decades before you know? <laughs> right <laughs> these little right. experiences they've had so that's cool I really love that so your mom had a camera like an analog film camera right and mm -hmm. was she developing her own film or did you learn how to do that as well so she did not but I really wanted to learn photography and I ended up in Albuquerque uh, and I took a photo class then, but I 
Another stock answer I have is that I didn't have the nerve to study art, but I did some studio classes, uh, uh, had a couple of different experiences with photo that way, but I never studied it formally and she never. So I still have this, that's part of that love hate. You know, there's this, um, that's what I I feel like that's what I'm going to do. Um, as I get older, I have all the dark room equipment. I have a space but I just can't quite commit. So I feel like in some ways I'm working backwards towards that. Um, oh. It's such a complicated relationship I have with photo. So it's it's one of those things where, because I still work in film and analog and because I don't develop or print myself, it's hard to refer to myself as a photographer. Yeah, that's just the thing. That's kind of interesting. <laughs> this far into the you know, loving photo. I still have a hard time identifying as a photographer because of those things. Oh gosh. Oh, that's so, funny. Yeah, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, I think a lot of photographers, especially now with the digital stuff, people don't really have access to, you know, necessarily doing anything other than like taking the picture, right? And then not doing something more with it as far as like through a development process or through Mm -hmm. Photoshop or whatever yeah I do and so it's kind of like the moment that you take the picture that's it yeah (laughs) and well I will admit that I'm I'm starting to talk about my photo process as a process and and some of that means I drop off film there's a new place in Birmingham I don't know if you knew about it but it's called Electra and I really want to plug them they're do because they're they're young guys and they have it's a new business and they're developing wow, um, that's cool. cool so I feel good supporting them yeah. but also I just I like I really love the idea of sitting on images for a long time just collect go uh enjoying the process of using it and an old camera with film in it, immersing yourself in whatever it is, a family or, you know, whatever, you're enjoying your shoot. And then the film is developed later. And I like that gap between. Um, so all those little parts of it are important to me. Yeah. Um, yeah. The pace of it. I think that's kind of like, you know, we were Misty Grenade posted in the Alabama Women's Caucus group on fo- Facebook about how do you know you're when you're finished? Right. Exactly. And that's kind of like, you know, part of the process of, you know, like you, you've taken your images and it feels like maybe you're like ruminating on it or thinking on it or it's in the back of your mind mm-hmm. and then you get it developed and it becomes something else. And mm-hmm. Do you take a lot of your developed pictures and put them into like sort of multimedia creations? Like how how does it end up usually? <laughs> I'm so happy you asked me this because I need to practice talking about this. So I, yes, I am currently working on, well, what, I just laugh when I say currently because I took the images most of the images in 2020 yeah. and I'm just getting my head wrapped around what I want to do or at least part of this project for me is a collection of images in book form an art book form and it's all music related it's uh the two things that the two threads are Alabama and music other than that it's just sort of this it's a long, great story with a community of people. I'm actually going to the Blues Festival today. And so some of the people will be there. So it's this community of music people, but it's more than that for me. It's uh, music in general. So there are jazz and blues um, musicians, but then uh, I have other people who are involved on the, with the music scene. They're not necessarily musicians, some people from out of town, out of Birmingham. And so... I've I've been sitting with those images all this whole time and I shuffle them around. I'm working with a small publisher, an art book publisher, and he's an artist. And um, I think I need to figure out, I, I'm always taking images, but how, how to put them together in some sort of visual narrative that's really interesting is a completely new process. So doing a book, for instance, is 
this is what I'm trying. And so it's been, I've been really quiet about it, but you know, I guess behind the scenes in my own head, it's a con I'm constantly thinking about those pictures mm -hmm. and rearranging them and trying to figure out, um, how do they work together and what are they saying together? It's not really clear yet, but I find as time goes on and I get to know some of these people and it's just interesting how you, when you yourself change or live different experiences, the way you look at your own work or yeah. in this case photos, that change can change too. Or you see new relationships between um, images so yeah, I'm working on that right now and I'm really excited about it. Because it is really cool. And like and I imagine like if you're not doing sort of a one off piece that would be hanging in a gallery or something like right. that, and you're doing it in a book form, then you have to think about it completely differently. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it, are you thinking about it being sort of a narrative, like a telling a story of some sort, or like are, how are you so it started <laughs> with, it started just with my dumping images into a shared file with um this publisher and yeah. seeing um what he saw in it and what he put together and the way I organized images for him for instance uh was by you know mus musician which makes sense you know you have this person this person or um but the more something about that doesn't feel like I'm seeing interesting conversations between them, like, um, this, she's so badass, she's so cute, she's a, the band doesn't exist anymore, her name is Molly, and she's got her guitar, and I did some uh, digital editing with that, or and playing with my scanner and the negatives with that one, and then if it's paired with an images, if she's on the right, the image to the left might be of, um, I'm liking her with this guy and his guitar uh and the, the guitars to these people are really um yeah. they're special objects or with you know jose and his trumpet so it's an instrument and a musician so everything changes when you start putting them side by side and the narrative shifts yeah. so i'm kind of that's what's exciting me more than anything is pairing up the images so yeah. that's where i am now yeah how do they respond to one another and then as a collection. And I think I want to do, if, if this goes well, it gets me so excited that I think it would just be an ongoing, I would just do a series of books and come out with volumes maybe and just make it a thing because it's, it's a way for me to enjoy photo without, sometimes there's a lot of pressure if you're doing portraits. I think there's this perception of what you'll get back, what a portrait is. Yeah. And I'm not a portrait photographer but I am yeah. uh, I like portraits so it's an interesting journey you know to think back to my mom's camera now and all the phases of photo I've been through um it's always there it's the consistent thing yeah in my artistic career for sure oh, I, I think that that's just you've brought up so many things that like I took a photography course in college and learned how to develop film. I couldn't awesome. tell you. How, I couldn't tell you how to do it now, though. <laughs> That's awesome, though, because it wasn't fun. really like it wasn't. It wasn't something that I was super excited about. It yeah, was like something that I was required to take. Right. <laughs> so you know, it was fun, and I bought a camera and I did the film. You know, awesome. I mean, at the time, we didn't really have digital cameras yet. At the time, right. And so it was, you know, like I spent a lot of money on this camera. It's like yeah. literally in my garage right now. Oh no! What kind of camera? <laughs> I might oh, need to talk. It's like I want to say it's like a Nikon, mm -hmm. the thirty-five millimeter. It's like a, I don't know. Well, it's there's a resurgence. There's this renaissance, and yeah, they're buying those up. Do you still have your photos that you took? all those years probably ago. yeah I think I, that'd be interesting to look at those now I have like like so in my class they had like a you had to have a binder and mm -hmm. you had to put like your film in there and then some mm -hmm. of your pictures that you had taken and developed right and all of that's kind of in there it's like yeah. all it's kind of silly stuff it's like that's a treasure 
pictures of my cat, you know. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun to find. I love that stuff. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to send it to you because um, my kids actually just found it in the garage and they were oh, like, really? well, there's a camera in the garage. And I was like, oh, yeah. <laughs> That's so fun. Yeah. So I might just turn it over to you and let you have it if you wanted to. <laughs> yeah, I was saying I, we might need to talk. Yeah. Yeah, but I love this. I don't know. I, you know, through that process and taking pictures and I and I understand photography and I understand like in, in more in the traditional sense, not necessarily like contemporary or mixed media, um, right. but that process of taking the picture and then the waiting and then the having it developed or developing it and then deciding, okay, what are you going to do with yeah. the actual image? Yeah. You know, and how do you come about deciding what you do next? Like, is it connected to the, like the subject matter or, or, you know, what your project or your end goal is as far as like, like you're talking about your book, but, you know, you have like your piece that's in the myth and form right. um, show, like, is that part of a larger group or is that a single? That's such a good question. Piece? I, cause I, for so long, I felt like I am all over the place. You know, what am I doing? And I, it just boils down to portraits to me. I think is the, yeah, okay. the one word I think about. They're always about people somehow. Yeah. Um, so music is a universal language. The uh -huh. universal language is the one. And I really like that idea of music connecting everybody. And, and so I think that exists in everything that I do. So I'm always trying to find... And this, and I want to say, like all this coming out of my mouth, it's so funny because I'm kind of realizing it as I say it because because I've been saying it in other places. Like the the questions you said, such a great exercise. I actually went through all of them, and I have little, you know, it's but it's so so hard to find words. But this whole process of having to think about and write about has really helped me see that there are these connections in everything I do. And so one of those is that interest in, it sounds maybe cheesy, but the connectedness of everybody and humanity and, you know, Kasturba Gandhi, I, she's, for me, she's a woman I would like to learn more about because yeah. I can identify as a woman and a mother. And um, I like what I know about her, I'm so interested in what she was about and what was it like being married to this man, you know, this iconic figure. And, and then with music, it's, uh, it's actually very personal. The idea of putting it into book form was to do something, an object that you could hold that was uh, in a way memorial. I don't want to say memorializing, but for me, it's remembering two mm -hmm. people um, and my connection through music to these people. And um, so I think it's always about communities of people or people, everything that I do. Now, you mentioned that, I mean, you said subject matter like portraits, but is it beyond that? Like, what is it that you're kind of looking to say or what is your voice? Right. I think the the manifestation of an object so a collage for instance and I like all the background and those that collage Kasturba and others not all of them um but a lot of them are it's handmade paper and then the tissue and the wax and I'm using this old iron that has a sentimental connection for me and so all of that is a way to physically be involved with what I'm doing mm -hmm. and that's just thinking that's just thinking about these people it's not even really to I want to highlight people for others to talk about or know about or ask about but it's also a way for me it it's a way to focus on this one particular person and dive a little deeper I might read I don't always read a biography sometimes I don't want to know a whole lot before I like really looking at a face and, and just thinking about highlights of a person and what they're known for. Mm -hmm. And something that struck me recently, 
I can't remember. I don't know his name. It's a recent biography of um, Martin Luther King and the biography biographer was being interviewed. And in this interview, he says that, you know, this idyllic man that we all know and reference mm -hmm. um, fully deserving, you know, all the, the recognition, but he was also a man. And there are things about this person um, that was human. And I, I'm not looking for things like that. I think I want it for my own comfort to know that if, even if I'm trying as hard as I can try, you know, what struggles did Kasurba Gandhi have? What was her day-to-day -day life like? And how did she still manage to devote so much of her life to something so major and big like civil rights and speaking for groups of people um, that interests me? And I want to learn from that and I want to share that. And so the materials are just a way to think about all that stuff, I think. Yeah. Yeah. It's just something that interests me. Yeah, yeah. And I, oh, I totally get, like, I read a lot of biographies. On the you way. do? Yes, yes. I'm, like, really okay. interested in that. But, um, and it's completely random. It's just me wanting mm -hmm. to know more about the person or whatever. But the truth is, is that everybody has a different perspective. And if you read yes. a biography, like two different biographies of the same person. Yes. You can get completely different impressions. Like some of them will be very, you know, like in awe of the person and mm -hmm. and it's almost like the person's magical or something. Yes. And the other one will be very stark and, mm -hmm. you know, here are the facts, you mm -hmm. know, and this is how they could be awful sometimes or they could be, right. you know. Right human or whatever and so you know the idea of like having these images and just kind of looking at them as a person versus getting to know too much about them is probably a good idea <laughs> well I think it's a reminder that none of us are two-dimensional but we tend to <laughs> categorize people you know just based on absolutely just the little that we know but usually there's so much more nothing's ever you know, I found myself thinking about talking with you today that because uh, this comes up sometimes this this very question and um and I guess I also wanted to say it's really it's about ethics and morality, but there's nothing there are these general ideas of what that you know may, when you break down a life and someone that we plug in like Martin Luther King Dr. Martin Luther King that we plug in, I mean there's no doubt. But at the same time, to understand, yeah, this human component, um, you realize that good and evil is not, it's just not easy to decipher all the time. It's not always easy to know what's right and wrong. And and I think it that really gets to the essence of where I'm really interested is how do people make these choices? Um, what's it based upon? You know, and you think about, especially Martin Luther King, I think a lot of us are kind of. I mean, almost like um, it's kind of like propaganda, but we we've been learning about Martin Luther King probably through our whole entire education system. And yeah. we all kind of been told the same stories and read read the same sort of books and things like that. And then to have that sort of human part of him just sort of exposed yeah. <laughs> would be kind of I feel like it would probably be kind of like shocking like or or like holy cow oh my gosh but okay. in some ways isn't it comfort I guess for me it's it is comforting, it is comforting oh, even he had his yeah yeah even he went through moments of I mean we know it but I think to really ingest that and understand that isn't yeah. so easy all the time and it's it's exactly what you said it's perspective and you know unless you know you don't know and Oh, so yeah, that is interesting. I love that. That is awesome. Yeah. I think that's why that's probably why I read a lot of biographies is kind of mm. knowing a little bit more about the person than what you would generally just being told like in school or yeah. you know, like on TV and some kind of like dramatization of the person mm. or whatever. You don't right. really you 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 always kind of get one side, you know, that mm doesn't really tell multiple sides of a person you're reminding me of um I I keep the graphic novel March by my bed the yeah. John Lewis 
and uh, I'll just pick it up occasionally. And recently, uh, I reread this is this little you know one or two little quotes uh, quote bubbles, but essentially his family I don't want to use the wrong words I don't know if they were ashamed of him essentially because he was being arrested and um the context was just so different looking back and under trying to understand but he was so compelled uh to do what he felt was the right thing and it it was but his you know his family he was being arrested and it's uh that's equated with he's in trouble with the law and he's bad and so it just so much is context so much is time and people culture so many factors yeah yeah to consider oh that's just (laughs) oh my gosh that that brings a lot of depth to your work too I think like realizing that about you know kind of the way that you're thinking about the people that you're you know doing portraits of and that kind of thing and then the materials that you're using as far as like paper and like you're, you said you were using, you were ironing with a special mm. iron and things like that. Is there any other like elements that you use that, that way that is sort of meaningful to you? Yes. I want everything. I'm overly sentimental. I think <laughs> you're fault. So I, I try to find meaning in everything. I'm another little side experiment is um, through the prison arts program. I was teaching collage. And so I have all the parts, the leftover parts. And I, you know, that's just palpable. You remember the space. It's touching something. And so I have all those parts from those classes. Thread that I use was my grandma. Most of it was my grandmother's or from a friend. You know, things like that are materials. Like yeah. the linens are all. Yeah. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I tear it what's also this idea of waste. So I can't throw anything away and then I have to use it. So I have these little games. I don't know if you ever do that. I ah, can I use up all this, you know, in one <laughs> project. So a lot of it for me is paper, which involves collage and hmm. more collage. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. So like you went to school and you got a degree in psychology? psychology and then the plan was to get a master's in art therapy but I never even finished studio classes to apply I moved and my life went another direction for a while (laughs) Mm. and then here I am yeah but how do you uh, I guess what I'm trying to get Hmm. at now is kind of your you know you're a resident artist at ground floor contemporary and you're you know you're you've got all of these arts education Mm -hmm. programs that you're doing how did you get into doing those things like was it a matter of like connecting with people or certain people or how did that come about all of those opportunities I think it's always who you know and I say that in air quotes that's so true in so many circumstances sometimes it's who are you associating with because you want to be involved you know and who I think I see my same pattern I just say yes to so many things um and when I was a young mother actually I I, um had a friend that I had known and had not seen in a year or two and she had moved back to DC and was teaching at the Corcoran through a summer arts program. And I went up to help her teach paper making. Yeah. And then she taught at um, Smithsonian summer camp program. And I helped her do that. I think those were two consecutive years. And then with Smithsonian, that just stuck because they need instructors. So I was there for 20 years. Wow. It just was a, we need teachers and you know and my daughter was two actually weaned her to go up there so I have all this mommy guilt about you know when I oh no (laughs) because I was in my 20s and it was a good opportunity so I um but I loved I loved it so much and it worked out really great um but that's how I got into art education Mm -hmm. and then um studio by the tracks is where I volunteered during college and then coming back 
So I have, you know, a history. That's how I ended up learning about art therapy. And that was during college. So I think all those little things, I've just stuck with stuff. So through teaching in DC, you know, people here, you teach paper making. Okay, well, then you're asked to do a workshop and it just, it's just totally organic and I never sought it out but it's always what's felt I don't know it's just what I do it's weird to <laughs> to think about that question because I it's just so bizarre because I'm you know mid 50 or approaching mid 50s and I started doing this so like the age of my kids are now but mm-hmm. I never had a plan I just like being around art and artists and so, like do you think it was like you said, you just kind of was um, open to opportunities as they came up, you know, like people were like, hey, you want to go, you know, teach this yeah. class with me? And you were kind of like, yeah. <laughs> I think, and this is the honest truth. And it's kind of, I think saying yes to, you know, teachers and art educators in general don't get paid a lot. And I think I was someone who was willing to work and do it again and again. Um, and it's not to say that. I know I worked hard and I put a lot into it. I mean, a lot. Um, And I got a lot out of the experience. Uh, I've learned so much being in a classroom, um, especially not being trained as an educator or an artist for that matter. But I feel like I've earned this degree by this point, you know. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Um, I've had so much experience. But I, it just doesn't pay. I mean, I've always, that's, you always sacrifice something. So, yeah, I'm open to opportunities, but I also... I mean, I live for this stuff. So, you know, the financial business side of things is where I really, you know, that's a different conversation. So, but yeah, I just said, yes, honestly, I just, you know, anything like that, I would. What were, I guess some, what have been some of the struggles as far as being an artist and I don't know, making a living or, you know, not having creative block or whatever. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I find I say this a lot now too. I think I'm, it's a midlife sort of thing. Like that's where you, like we're having this conversation while I'm in my midlife. So yeah. a lot of the stuff I think about is um, answering this question, following the one you just asked me, is just so interesting to think about because I've always struggled as a child. You know, you have your disposition, mm-hmm. and mine was extreme shyness I mean that's my biggest struggle and as an adult it's so it's anxiety about everything Mm -hmm. and then as an artist you probably know this it's so vulnerable you know you're putting your this oh this stuff out there and how are people going to respond and does it matter how they respond and um so I found like it's actually something that fell out of my mouth that an artist talk recently was um what's a successful show to you Mm -hmm. and and what I said was I mean I really think about it um I have since but that people still engage with me after a show you know like it's okay (laughs) so I think it's all those emotional hurdles more than anything I don't worry about materials there's Mm -hmm. so much stuff in the world to work with I don't um the financial parts of struggle, you know, the business side, a one woman show. So marketing, uh, your bookkeeping, um, your social networking, all those things are, I'm getting a handle on it. You know, that's a rhythm that I, I struggle to find that balance for sure. And studio time. Yeah. yeah. I think, you know, in talking to a lot of artists through my podcast, I've come to realize that there are a lot of similar struggles between artists. Like we all kind of have these same things. And, you know, like you were saying, um, like a successful show being like, I guess when you're creating something and it's so vulnerable, it's like you're exposing yourself to a group of people. Some may be complete strangers. You don't know. Mm -hmm. you know what they'll think of it or whatever and then gosh the anxiety around that and like hoping that it goes well and that people aren't like appalled or disappointed or you know like they're like "Eh, 
whatever, or, <laughs> or ask you some question that you don't know the answer to. And it's so, oh, I, you, are you misinformed somebody, you know, all kinds of scenarios, but yeah, but yeah, you put yourself literally on the wall and for yeah. people to, uh, it's very, you're very exposed. I feel like, yeah, and you open think, yourself up. You know, it's funny that you said that because like, um, you know, Vero, um, yeah. the Naked Art Gallery, or former, um, she interviewed me on my podcast. Oh, and I cool. think about the questions, the, I think about some of my answers still to this day. Yeah. Like, why did I say yeah. that? That was yeah. so weird. Like, that wasn't even, like, that's not really what I feel like, you know? Yes. <laughs> Yes. Yes. And then you're like, it's oh. out there. Now it's out there. It's like on the internet. People are going to watch it and they'll be like, well, she said this about yeah. her art and that's what she must be thinking or what she's going for. And that, you know, I think for artists, a lot of times too, that's, that's such an evolving process like it just continues to change throughout your life mm -hmm. and where you are in life and mm -hmm. you know what you're trying to focus on and mm -hmm. you were talking about being in your midlife and how you're kind of thinking about things differently it's like one of those milestone times yes change and you're like okay now what do I feel about it you know <laughs> right. which I guess I should say exactly which the whole point of my saying that was and now I'm more comfortable putting things out there I feel more comfortable in accepting this shy anxious person that's just who I am and I've had enough good experiences that it it makes me feel more comfortable in doing it more and it, it's getting easier. And, and I am letting go of worrying so much about the response, but I also, you know, I need it and want it. It's important to engage with people. Yeah. Um, it's not as scary. Maybe that's <laughs> a good way to say it. It's not as terrifying. <laughs> um, and I feel better about it. It's, I don't think it's even about work that I'm putting out. It's just, uh, it's really the self, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I said that right, but. And being put on the spot to answer questions when you're mm -hmm. not, like, like if you're at a gallery show, like. Yeah. But when I went to the Myth and Form show um, just recently, it was like, I had people ask me about my work and I was just not prepared. I was like, oh, oh really? I was very nervous, you know, right. then I had to kind of fill in the blank suddenly of like what the artwork meant to me. Right. You know, right. but it's different. <laughs> I know exactly what you're saying. And it's also when you put yourself out there, you only have your perspective. There's no way you'll ever even see it the way um that someone else does or it's yeah. chances are that you won't um so yeah so how you put things together even maybe what you see and or try to find you know I um talked to someone this has been a while ago a photographer and she told me she did this series and yeah. she said 10 years later, she, it hit her. Oh my gosh, that's what that was about. That's what I was going through at the time. But she had a hard time writing about it, you know, trying to put it a narrative to it because she didn't know. And I think that's okay to say. I think it's okay to say, I, you know, I'm really not sure. I'm figuring out. That's, and this goes back to you and I were talking much earlier about, you know, connecting what I'm doing as much as, writing is another giant challenge but having to do it and buckle down and think in a narrative form with words is a good exercise because it forces you to to look at your work um, yeah. and try to see so it's interesting but I think it is okay to say you know I just don't know right now and ask and I also ask whoever your viewer is that could be interesting you know what do you see in my yeah. and that's how I kind of felt like when I was 
um, talking to these particular ladies who were asking me about it, I was like, well, in my mind, while I'm, the words are coming out of my mouth, in my mm-hmm. mind, I'm thinking, I wonder what they see. Like, yeah. that's what I want to know. Like, I need to know what you see. And then we can talk about it. Like, yeah, it, that's that part fun. of the, you know, the narrative or the mm-hmm. discussion around it. Because what I see, it may not be how that person is perceiving it and then does it put them off and make them think oh oh I don't want anything to do with that (laughs) and that would be okay too yeah it would be but I think because it's like that vulnerable yes ability thing it's like almost like they're saying oh we we don't want to do anything with your art or you you know (laughs) I know I know I do know um and then sometimes I think you can surprise yourself by having to answer on the spot. You might not even know that you knew what you know. Yeah, yeah. Like you suddenly make connections out of nowhere. Yeah. That you hadn't even thought about before. Mm-hmm. That's intuitive. <laughs> well, I, like, speaks. I like that you said that you could just say, I don't, I don't really know yet. Like I'm mm-hmm. working through. Mm-hmm. some ideas and it's in it's developing or mm-hmm. you know because that's yeah. that's that's authentic that's genuine it is it is exactly and you're not like trying on the spot to exactly. define it and you're talking about work that you've been doing all your life exactly it's okay and it's come up to this point where you made this specific artwork mm-hmm. now why did you do that artwork right you just be like, well, honestly, I'm not really sure yet. <laughs> and I'm not so much of a planner. Um, I really enjoy explore exploring and yeah. like what's going to happen. And, um, you know, there might be a general idea or something. So I think it's also gifting yourself with being open in ways that maybe you wouldn't be otherwise if you, you know, lock yourself into and and some people, I think it's just who you are, right? How you roll, but, or maybe you do start with a really solid plan, but you're open to changing that course and, mm-hmm. and seeing where that, you know, route ends up taking you in the long run. So yeah, it's, it's exciting. That's what's fun about art making to me is, is that part of it. Oh yeah, absolutely. And like if, after you finish a show or something like that, or a series and you had your, show or something I think that that's kind of exciting too because now you're like okay now what right where do I go next what am I focusing on next and if you're very curious Mm -hmm. and you're exploring things then that is like you know it's like it's like the whole world opens up and you could do anything but I think a lot of artists always have series of projects that are right. kind of going on at the same time right mm-hmm. like yeah. do you are you you're uh, do you prepare shows and series for certain events and you know they're coming and you're like okay here's a series for this show here's a series for this show like how does that happen, especially when you've got so many things everywhere going on? It doesn't. It doesn't. This is, the, I was going to say, tell me when you figure that out. I, there are people who <laughs> can who do that. I think because of how I got into art, I did it so, I feel like it's been so clumsy, um, my journey, but I've constantly been you know, a lot of times when you're asked and you say yes to things as a yes person, and I don't know if you're a yes person or not, I certainly am. And so sometimes you're that yes person to a last minute. And that's more, you know, you, so there are a lot of projects like that I will get asked to do. And I just, yes, I want to do it. But the time, I mean, it's not practical. Mm-hmm. I find myself in situations like that more often than I should admit. Um, <laughs> but I, so I feel like I'm in constant, like I'm all, like your paperwork is a great example. I kept putting it, I'd write it down and then things flood in. And so, you know, computer related things get boop. I mean, I'm jotting notes, but it's funny, the time. So now I feel like I've got a little traction just right now. I feel like I'm jinxing it. <laughs> I have some things booked 
out. And I'm really, really excited to see what's going to happen just given lead time. I don't know what that looks like for myself. The dress project. Mm, um, that, I mean, I'm now I feel like, okay, we've been in, we've had three exhibitions. I'm ready to finish my dress now. Like I love this exhibit because we can change and alter. It's never finished. It has not finished yet. Wow. Um, so I don't know what that feels like. But the book, the uh, music book for me, if this the first one feels right, that'll be, I feel like a project that's very clear um, about what it is I'm doing. And yeah. I don't know what that feels I'm really anxious to know what that feels like. I think that could be oh, yeah. <laughs> so awesome. You know, look at, do you ever watch those art shows? Um, and artists, they have their grants or they, you know, they're being paid to do a project. So they have two or three years and they're, they're in their studio with this, you know, months out and they can really plan. Um, and, then, and I'm saying this not as a planner, which is funny, but just having time, I guess, to, I don't think I have the time to plan. Like I would like, maybe that's what's yeah. happening. Well, if you had the time. Would yeah. you truly plan or I don't know. come down to that last little bit? Where I don't know. Like, that's it. That's what I want to do. I'm curious. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like right now, I feel like, you know, with these shows that are out a little bit, I'm really thinking, uh, I guess, conceptually about everything. Yeah. You know, what is it? Because I know that writing part's going to happen. So I get a lead on this writing. So what am I going to say? Yeah. And so that's been an interesting shift instead of making things first and then trying to figure out the narrative. It's, okay, this project's about this. And so I want to research. I'm doing some reading and writing before jumping in. I'm trying to figure out what the projects are. So already that's been a shift, yeah. which is kind of interesting. Uh, so maybe, I don't know, <laughs> maybe I'll, I feel like I'm being, I'm becoming more of a planner, kind of settling into it, you know, and the, yeah. you know, there's always details and everything. Yeah. Um, and so, and it gets back to the challenges of, um, being an artist. So this week alone, I was thinking about this. I try to, um, I'm always open to advice. But, you know, trying to plan those things, like I've been really poor on social media, um, but I've been at Studio by the Tracks a lot more. I did a family photo shoot in Selma this past weekend, photo shoot. They were very open to whatever. So getting the film, I had to take the film. I have to scan the Polaroids. You know, there are all these little parts and that can be a whole week. And so all these other things fall off but then I don't know it's just this really delicate dance of yeah how do you balance all that yeah the planning and I'm figuring it out I think (laughs) I'll always I'll think this is just me I think I I maybe operate best in a little bit of chaos and (laughs) and mystery what's gonna happen yeah (laughs) yeah oh so fun I I think I'm I'm kind of the same way. Like I really wish that I could plan, but I don't think, you know, and being a yes person, as mm-hmm. things come up, then you're like, yeah, yeah, I want to be, I want to yeah. be a part of that. I want to be a part of that. And then that just throws everything up in the air, and you're like, okay, now what can I catch and what can I let fall? Yeah. yeah. And a lot of times it'll be something like social media, you know, yeah. which people are like oh, you have to post every single day yeah. or whatever. And it's just like, ah, okay, no, yeah. I don't think I'm going to do that. <laughs> no. And I'm trying to recognize it that it is important, you know, to do all these things and how do you prioritize and, I, you know, websites, a big job or all these things, even, uh, you know, all of it. And so, I, yeah, I actually thought recently I might start, um, I thought of creating a sheet for myself. I don't know if you've ever written grants or, you know, there's, there's pretty much the same protocol for everything. You're going to have to have images. You're going to have to have a statement. You're going to have to have an updated resume and just, 
keep your old checklist. I just, those things are what sometimes um, I stumble over that kind of organization. Um, and I know people thrive, you know, it's, it's possible people do it. So, <laughs> um, but yes, that's interesting that you, what did you say that you tend to um, like, it's almost like, yeah, thrown, like you're juggling and you get thrown more things to juggle. Mm -hmm. And then you're like, well, I can't. So got yeah. got to choose one of these things, you know, is it, Okay, I'm not going to be able to clean the house today. You yeah. know, if I wanted to. I'm got. I've right. got to get this project done. And I've got to email this person, and mm -hmm. I've got to, you know, make sure that I write something about this mm -hmm. show that's coming up. And mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> just like, it, yes. And well, you have children, young children at home. <laughs> that's just the whole another level. Like, Okay, the kids' rooms are dirty. We'll just deal with that when we can get to it. And then you walk into the room and you're like, I've got to do something about this. Yeah. This is chaos. <laughs> Everything got, can reach as a point. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. It's, but that's part of what's so fun about living, isn't it? Is that there's always stuff going on. And <laughs> I think I'd rather it this way than to be bored. I can't even imagine being bored. Yeah. There's so much I want to do. And, so I'd write, yeah, it's good. Um, and it's all on you, you know, as an artist, it's up to you to show up and yeah, do it all, which is, I'd like, I like that, you know, mm -hmm. to give you the, you're in control. So um, even when you feel like you're out of control, it's still up to you. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, yeah. what shows do you have? I know you have several things going on. What shows are on? now or coming up very soon so you mentioned uh myth and form mm -hmm. which i'm very proud to be a, mem a member of the caucus and be in the show um indicator at the carnegie and then um i'm an artist in residence at studio by the tracks which is a really exciting um project and opportunity so that's just beginning that will be through December. Um, I'm working towards that's my dress form behind me from the dress show. So I'm gonna finish my form and work on my dress, but that show's not till next I think the next time we show is in the summer. But I have a few shows next year that I'm getting ready for. Oh yeah. Currently this residency is a really big project. So we get oh, thank you so much for talking to me today. I'm probably gonna just have to let you go because that was really nice to meet you. I hope to see you in person sometime. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Art Talk with April. For more information on this episode, join the Facebook group, The Art Lounge. Please subscribe and share. See you next Tuesday. Hope you have a great week.